Alrighty, so right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through how I set up my course uh, for my own class. So what I do first is I go down and I press settings and then I'm just gonna walk you through what's in the settings area here so that you can decide if you'd like to make some extra changes. Um, and that's completely fine, that's totally up to you. So first off, you can select an image here and you can make this image related to your class. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in film. All right, I'll take that Super 8 camera. Okay, I usually just keep all that the same because I've already decided on the name and then the course uh, shortening code. This, so the next thing I'm gonna go to is default term. And this is when it's basically asking, like how long is my class gonna go till? So we start school on the 31st, so it would start the 31st and it would end, we'll just say June 30th to be safe. And then you can check the box that says students can only participate in this course between these dates. Honestly, I usually leave it blank because by the time we finish, I'll um, end the course myself and so the students really can't do anything. And then I leave these boxes checked because I don't want the students to view this course before the start date, just because I don't want them to be able to go in and see anything or do anything just yet. I'm not completely finished, so I don't want them to get in yet. Everything else here is fine. I normally don't change any of that. That's all good with me. The format is um, blended, I guess, at this point. But you don't have to set that, so I'm just going to leave it as is. And I'm going to say update course details. And there we go. It's been updated. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to sections. And this is where you can enter in separate class periods. For example, maybe I've got a class third period. So I'm going to go ahead and add that. Maybe I have a class eighth period. I'll add that. And let's just say I've got a class fifth period. So we'll add that one as well. Alright, so now that I have these class periods on here, I can start kind of adding the students to the specific class periods. So in the last video, you saw how I added students. Uh, in the drop down menu, I could have changed which course section they were supposed to be added to. And um, that's all I would need to do in order to make sure they were in the right class periods. Let's say, for example, I messed up. Maybe I meant to put fifth period before eighth period. I can go ahead and just press this delete button and I can delete one of those sections and I can remake a new section to make it how it was supposed to be. And that's pretty much it. That's all you really need to know about sections. The next thing is the navigation. And the navigation is where you really get to customize your course. But what you can do is you can get rid of some of these tabs that are in your navigation section here. So for me, I don't use Algebra Nation, so I'm gonna go ahead and drag that down. I don't use uh, this app either. I don't use this one. I do use Nearpod, and um, I do use Office 365. However, I don't use this class notebook. I don't use collaborations. I'm not gonna use conferences, and I'm not gonna use rubrics, outcomes. I normally don't use announcements because I just use Remind 101, so I'll get rid of that one as well. And now let's say if I made a mistake, maybe I did one announcement, I can always just click and drag it back up and it'll be added back to the uh, navigation section. However, just keep in mind, this is what the students will see. So just because you disable one of the apps here doesn't mean you won't have access to it. It just means that the students won't be able to view it. So if I were to actually create this course like mine, I would get rid of quite a few of these. Uh, and the reason for that is because you can access pages, files, syllabus, all that kind of stuff through the modules, except syllabus actually, you can't add syllabus. So we'll get rid of syllabus. But I can do anything that the students are gonna interact through the modules. So I normally hide the rest of this stuff um, because it just cleans it up and it doesn't give the students too many options. So that way I know for sure they're gonna be in the right place. So I'll move modules up, because this is important. Assignments can go, files can go, and I don't really want them to see who's in their class, so I'm gonna go ahead and disable people as well. So now I'm left with home, modules, announcements, discussions, grades, pages, Office 365, and Nearpod, which is great. That's what I need, that's what I want, perfect. Now the only thing I do wanna add is Zoom. 
So this is new to Canvas, but we're gonna go ahead and add Zoom because that's what we're gonna be using for our online kids. So we added Zoom in our list. And now that I'm finished, I'm gonna go ahead and press save. And this will then save our changes for our list here. Now the next thing is going to be the apps. So just like our navigation, those are pretty much all apps that can be found on this section here. So let's say for example, you want the students to be working in a particular program and you wanna see if Canvas has that program. You can go up to the search bar here and just type in whatever program you're looking for. So let's say for example, I'm looking for the program Gmetrics. So as soon as I start typing it in, you see there's Gmetrics. I'll go ahead and press it. Now, I will mention that there are some apps that you may not be able to add because you don't have the access code. So if I go ahead and press add app, it's going to ask for the consumer key and the shared secret. I don't actually know what these are in order to add this. So I'm gonna go ahead and just close it. And I can show you in a different video on how I would work around this. Um, but for now, we're just gonna pretend that uh, it didn't work out, so we're just gonna leave it alone. All right, the next thing is the feature options tab. I don't mess with any of this stuff. Everything that it's pre-made is, is fine with me. Uh, this goes into a lot more detail on, on like grades and um, anonymous sending and stuff like that. And I, personally, I don't need to worry about that. So I just leave everything in here how it is. Now I do want to mention some of these buttons on this side because some of these will come in handy um, when we get a little further along this video series. The first thing is share to commons. So if you remember from the first video I talked about what commons is, if you'd like to share this course with the rest of the commons community, you definitely can by pressing that button. If you want to see what the students see, you would select this button. If you want to look at the course statistics, you would select this one, the course calendar, and then at the very end, once the semester or the year has finished, you would press conclude this course. And what that basically means is you are no longer active in this course, the students aren't able to access it. You will be able to access it, but you won't be able to change anything, so no grades, no assignments, none of that. Um, if you really mess up, you can delete the course. Uh, I don't believe you can do this with the district's version of it, so just keep that in mind. You can copy the course and you can basically put this into another course. So if you wanted to take all of the information that you've done with one of your classes, you can take that and add it to a second class if you wanted to. And that's exactly what these do too. You can uh, export your course content and import it into another course so you don't have to duplicate anything. You just do it once and then you can copy them to each class. You can also reset the course content, which basically means um, if students have submitted stuff to it, it'll erase it and basically send it back to the very beginning. And then the last one I actually don't use, so I'm not entirely sure, but that's all you really need to know when it comes to the settings of your course. Uh, if you'd like to learn more, the next video is going to be on how to set up a module. And this is very important because the module is your heart of your course. So if you've got this set up, your students will have a lot easier time managing and going through your course. So if you would like to learn more about that, come and join me in the next video. So I can show you.